Our guest speaker tonight, Dr. David Michaela. He is a neurosurgeon here in St. Petersburg. And um, he shares a lot of our same values and beliefs, and he's been guest speaker at other groups. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy him tonight and enjoy what he has to say. Um, Dr. Michaela? the opportunity to come here and, and meet with y'all and thank you. Thanks to Eileen and, and other folks here for their hospitality. And more importantly, I want to thank you for um, giving me hope. You know, it's, it's people like you fighting for liberty that have given me hope that my kids are going to grow up with freedom in our country. You know, we're in a, a, a bad position up until this point with, with government kind of a uh, with us on our back, kind of with our boot on our throats, and we're all fighting to get them in their proper place, which is kind of on their knees before America, begging for our favor and serving us. And it's never going to happen. We're never going to put government back in its rightful place unless people like you stand up and fight and keep fighting and don't give up against all adversity. So thank you so much for being willing to fight. Um, I am a, a local neurosurgeon. I've, I've been working hard in what I call the Liberty Movement for many years. Uh, there are many colleagues I work with who started a group called Cut Tax and now a few years ago to protest my property taxes and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But my most recent efforts have been directed towards health care because of the health care reform, which, you know, like a zombie, like from a bad scene in Night of the Living Dead, never seems to die. <laughs> Every time you think you've killed this thing, this healthcare zombie rises from the grave, and yet again we have to put a stake through its heart. And, and I hope that the Republican Party, the Republicans in D.C., don't feel some need to compromise away on principles so that uh, they can create a bill and say they were there to reform health care because none of the proposals on the table, not a single one of them is right for America. And there are many great ideas for changing the status quo, but what is being proposed in Washington has nothing to do with changing the status quo. It has to do with expanding the status quo so government and insurance companies and special interests are in charge of your health care. And if we really want to change the status quo, instead of giving power to all those people, we'll put power into the hands of each and every one of you as individuals, because that is where the power has been missing in healthcare for decades now, and I'll talk a bit about that. You know, I kind of see us as being in the fourth game of the World Series in America when it comes to liberty. We lost the first three games, okay? The first game was when they created the income tax and the Federal Reserve. And we lost that game. They created a system 100 years ago that puts the banks and people who we will never know in charge of our financial system that have, have debauched our currency and have, have put us really on our knees before debtors. They're printing money, you know, putting us into a hyperinflationary spiral that's going to crush capitalism, as Lenin said, between the millstones of taxation and inflation. So that was game one. We lost it income tax and Federal Reserve. Game two was the New Deal. The concept ingrained in America, still if you talk to people who, who came from that era, they still got this concept that Franklin Delano Roosevelt rescued America by creating massive governments. And they still have this concept that there's simply no way they could ever have survived the Great Depression without a government check. And it, it is just so sad to have those conversations because if you study the New Deal, we know that it was those policies that lengthened and deepened the Great Depression. So that was game two. We lost that one. Game three of the World Series was the Great Society under Linda Banks Johnson. Now, I was born in 1965, and LBJ gave his Great Society speech uh, in 1964 in Ann Arbor. And he talked about a 40-year plan to change our cities, to get rid of poverty, to create racial unity. Well, 40 years have come and gone, and his plan has failed. Medicare has run out of money long ago, never had any money. It was another promise that could never be kept. You know, one of those politician promises, trust me, 
I'm here. I'll give you the, the moon and the stars, but you know, they have a $36 trillion unfunded liability. Medicaid is, is, is a terrible health care ghetto for the poor. It's disgusting how the poor are treated in Medicaid. Medicaid only covers 53% of the cost of doctors' uh, expenses in Florida. So that means Medicaid patients can't find doctors. As a result, they go to the ER twice as often as even the uninsured. So even though they technically are covered, they go to the ER twice as often. And this is one of the myths I'll mention, that if we cover everyone with insurance, they're going to stop going to the ER. Well, if they don't pay for the cost of the health care, no one will see them and they'll still go to the ER. So that was the third strike, it was a great society. And we're now in our fourth game of the World Series. And it is the basically the final takeover of American individual liberty by government and corporations and special interests. Some call it socialism. I think it's more appropriately labeled fascism. But whatever it is, it's taking away my individual liberty. And we are in the late innings, and we are rallying from behind, and we are now in a position to win this fourth game of the World Series. And if we don't win it, then it's time to change the rules of the game and to step away from this playing field where the umpires or the government regulators themselves and stop playing games and take our country back, hopefully with the peaceful tools that were given to us by our forefathers, which are the, the freedom of speech and assembly and petitioning our government. Now, before I go on to talk a bit about healthcare, I want to say hi to my wife who came out here with Annie, and my two little girls, Holly and Lily, who came out to hear their daddy. I want to thank you. I'm going to talk about my wife later because she's basically the reason I'm standing up here. She's a brilliant woman. I'll tell you about how brilliant she is a little bit. Um, here is um, here's some facts about healthcare. America has the best health care system in the history of mankind. We have the best health care. Let's put it that way. The best health care in the history of mankind. We can do things that have never been done before. A president named Bill Clinton can go to his doctor in Manhattan and within an hour or two be in the hospital and that day get two stents put in his heart to treat his chest pain and go home at 6 a.m. the next morning, less than 18 hours. Anyone can do that in America. But the system that is being proposed would make that a right reserved only for the rich, the powerful, the elite, and the well-connected. Because there are programs coming that will have bureaucrats deciding that you cannot get that stint. And right now, Blue Cross Blue Shield of New York has created a standard that they're about to roll out that says you must wait 12 weeks to see if they can get rid of your chest pain with medication to help prevent what they view as an overpriced stint. But, you know, okay, that makes some sense. We don't want to spend too much money. But if you're the one living in chest pain, why in the world, and, and you bought a policy, a health care insurance policy that you thought was going to take care of your chest pain, why in the world should you have to wait 12 weeks to bolster the profit margin of some insurance company? And that same model is going to be applied throughout government run medicine. Some committee, some bureaucrat with corporate special interests in charge, or politicians who, who made a promise they couldn't keep is going to decide that we need to spend less on health care and create standards to prevent you from getting the care you thought you were going to get. Now, there are, there's another fact. Costs are too high. Health insurance premiums are far too high. Health costs are far too high. It's unacceptable that premiums have gone up double digits every year this decade. It's unacceptable. But I ask you this, why has that happened? How has it occurred? Well, it's occurred because the government and the insurance companies have been in charge for decades. And it is not the solution to give these people more power. It is time to say to them, you caused this problem. We're going to take the power out of your hands, and we're going to apply what really works to lower costs, and that's free market principles in health care.